Well, good afternoon, everyone. We want to welcome you to Abundant Life Through the Word. Man, the Lord is good. So greatly to be great to be before you tonight, wherever you may be watching. Listen, share and like. It's going to be an awesome night tonight in the Word of the Lord. We have a new subject, a new topic tonight we'll be starting on. We've been teaching on the baptism, the work of the Holy Spirit. We're not changed from that to some degree, but tonight we're going to be starting and embarking on a new study about understanding and knowing your assignment and how important that is. Man, that is a powerful, powerful truth and very, very important because each one of us has a destiny, a purpose, and an assignment in our life. And so if we don't know what that is, then we, we can oftentimes be doing things that God's not put in our life to do or not assigned us to do, and that can get us in a lot of difficulty and a lot of circumstances. So tonight, as we embark in this study, I want you to share in light. Listen, if you hadn't downloaded the app, LiveNow.com, TV on your phone or your tablet, uh, please do so. Amen. We're on Root Crew, all the, uh, the venues that you know about, and you can see our commercials. I need your help to help spread it. So if you see a commercial, a promo about life now, please share it, share it, share it, share it. We got to get the word out that people know that we're on and the word of God's been broadcast. And so we're excited about what the Lord is doing. So we welcome you tonight. It's going to be a great, great time studying the word of the Lord. So in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20, it says, Let every man abide in the same calling wherewith he was called. What, what Paul was encouraging the Corinthians in this verse is to understand that every one of us has a calling. We have a purpose and a destiny from God. Your, your calling may not be exactly like mine, mine may not be like yours, but we all are being created by the Father for a divine purpose. And he's given assignments in our life. We can have multiple assignments, uh, men, but uh, it's important if we don't understand that, then oftentimes we can miss. He says, wherewith you were called. I like this word called because it really uh, draws a picture for me oftentimes is that God chose you for the task that he's assigned you to. Man, that'll make you shout. When you feel inadequate, you feel like you're not able to do what you think God's get put in your life to do. And I've been there many, many times. You got to understand that he called you to it. Amen. And whatever he called you to, he equipped you for success. So I want to encourage you tonight as we begin this study on assignment. Let your friends know that we're home. Let them know that they need to jump in on this Bible study and hear the word of the Lord. Here's Psalms 139 and 3 says this. Thou can pass my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Now, this verse is very important for me as well because one thing it tells me is that the Lord is near unto us and he knows you better than you know yourself. You know, one of the things that excites me is to know that the Lord chose me and called me, even though he knew all my faults and failures. Man, that, that's a tremendous blessing. Because people, when people get to know you and they know your flaws, they can oftentimes reject you. They can oftentimes uh, ridicule you. But see, the Lord knew all things about your life because he created you. But yet he still called you and chose you for this season. And man, what a season it is. Now's the time to rise up and in anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit to walk out what God's called you. It's time for you to, to, to silence the voices of the cannots. Amen. And be a Joshua and a Caleb to say, but the Lord said Canaan was ours. Amen. Let's go get what God promised us. Amen. Let's go get after what God has called us to. So I want to encourage you. So, so as we start this, every, uh, everything God created has created, was created to solve a problem. Now, this first little study that I'm going to walk you through tonight is going to be talking about being a solving a, a solving a problem. You are were created to solve a problem. Amen. Cre creativity is the search for solutions. In large gatherings, speakers could could not be heard clearly. So the microphone, public address systems, and I'm wearing a microphone tonight, eyeglasses because I don't have the perfect eyesight anymore for those who have difficulty seeing. Problems are the uh, catalyst for creativity. In other words, when problems arise, then there there's, should rise in us creativity to be able to uh, address the issue or the problem. 
See, when problems arise, most of us want to flee from it. Most of us want to escape away from it. We want to get out of our difficulties or the things we may be facing. But see, God will drop you right in the middle of a mess because he's anointed you to solve the problem. <laughs> Amen. To be a problem solver. You are the answer. Amen. Through Jesus Christ. So problems uh, are the catalyst for, for, for creativity to arise in us. If there's no problem, if there's no trial, there's no test, then, you know, we can oftentimes get lazy in our box. Amen. And just expect things to just fall in place where God has called us. Faith without works is dead. We must be actively engaging in the assignment that God has in our life. I can, I can t stand here and tell you tonight so many things in my own personal life that, amen, seemed impossible. Where we're standing tonight, what we're doing now, reaching around the world tonight, amen, is this, this, the, the gospel will go out throughout the whole world. I never knew it would be possible. Certainly never knew that God would call us to do what we're doing now. Amen. When I saw, when I had the commandment or the assignment from God, I saw the problem. I said, Lord, I can't do that. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a man of good speech and I'm not very the best educated. I, I, I was kind of like Moses. When God told Moses to go down to uh, Egypt to deliver his people, Moses said, I can't speak very good. And you know what God did? God didn't clean up his speech. He, what he did was he put a partner with him. Amen. Uh, and assigned Aaron to go with him to be his spokesman. And so oftentimes we want to just get out of our circumstances and things, but we must understand uh, it's oftentimes often things that we use on a daily basis, like your car. Uh, your car was a was a, a solution for the transportation problem. We went from horses <laughs> to walking, from horses to all the means of travel. Now you can get on an airplane and go across the world in a matter of hours. What, is, what was that? The airplane was created to solve a problem. Just stay with me. Mechanics solve car problems. Dentists solve teeth problems. Lawyers solve legal problems. Accountants hopefully solve tax problems. That's, that is why God created us. God wanted a loving relationship. He wanted he wanted to be chosen, pursued, and treasured. Adam had a problem, and he needed human companionship. So what did God do? God, we know in Genesis, he put Adam to sleep, and, and God could put a rib from him, and then he made Eve. And God solved the problem with Adam. I want you to understand something today. As you see each of us, each of us is a solution. You are a solution. I'm going to drill that home tonight and continue to keep talking about that because, amen, as, as long as you feel like I have nothing to bring to the table, I can't, I can't accomplish anything, I'm useless or I'm hopeless or my circumstances are too big, you need to begin to prophesy to yourself and encourage yourself. God has called me to be the solution. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't run from difficulties. Amen. Face it head on. What did David do? David, when he came uh, to bring bread and cheese uh, to his brothers. Uh, amen. Goliath was out and they were, when they, he would come out and array himself, the Bible says, uh, uh, David heard him. And all the children of Israel, the army of Israel, would go hide themselves. But what did David do? No, nah, David was not afraid. Uh, David said, I'll, who, what will a man get if he goes out and fights the giant? And David saw the rewards. David was equipped and had the ability because he saw Goliath as an uncircumcised Philistine. In other words, doesn't matter how bad he was, doesn't matter how much armor he had, he knew that God was not with him and God was with David. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Good grace, I feel like preaching. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's important for you to understand. See, God will put you in circumstances and situations not to run from it. Not to, 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 to let fear cause you to, uh, to, to turn away. But to understand that God's called me and anointed me to solve the problem. Amen. To be the solver, the solver of the situation. So when you open your eyes every morning, you're looking into the entire world crowded with solutions. Amen. Uh, everything created is a solution to somebody somewhere at some time. You are the walking solution to somebody. Praise the Lord. You need to prophesy to yourself and say, I'm my answer to somebody. Praise the Lord. You may not be everybody's answer. Amen. But you are the answer to someone. And I want to make sure that you catch this. This means you are a reward to someone. 
See, quit, quit uh, uh, you know, hanging around people that only tolerate you. Amen. You need to start hanging around people that celebrate you. Praise the Lord. Uh, there's people uh, waiting for you to arrive, waiting for you to rise up, waiting for you to understand that the anointing placed by the Holy Spirit through Christ on your life, amen, to, to show up in the right place as David did to solve the problem. Amen. All the army of Israel, they were afraid, praise God, and they wouldn't go out and fight. One boy, one young man had the unction and the anointing and the gifting upon his life and the belief in his God that he could go and overcome and be the solution to the dilemma that they were facing. You are necessary to somebody somewhere today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. See, in your circle is different than my circle. There's friends, workplaces, things and places you go and do that I'm not won't be a part of. So you got you can't piggyback on someone else. It's time for the, the children of God to mature and rise up and know that who you are in Christ Jesus. You are not a victim. You are victorious. You're not the tail. You are the head. You're the overcomer. You're a winner in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're not going down. We're going up. Praise the Lord. And we are blessed coming in and going out. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And you got to change your perspective about who you are before God can begin to open the doors that is needful for you to walk through. Amen. Because God wants to set you up for success. Read, there's some powerful words I want to read to you in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. Praise God. See, many of you have heard this scripture quoted oftentimes, but it has it really set in. There's something I want you to catch in this early part of this verse. It says that the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord is coming to you tonight to tell you to pick your head up. And begin to realize who you are through the anointing and the position and the placement as being the sons of God. Hallelujah for the glory of God. And know that he's calling you for such a time as this. And he says, before I formed thee in the belly, in your mother's womb, I knew thee. Hallelujah. God knows you better than you know yourself. And I just want to encourage you tonight that God is working on your behalf He's setting things up in your life for his glory. And it's important. And, there, and, be, and before thou comest forth out of the womb, listen what he says to Jeremiah. I sanctified thee. This Hebrew word for sanctified, sanctified means that he was set apart. He was chosen. In other words, he had a, a direct uh, uh, involvement in the arenas of Jeremiah's life. So as it is with you and I. If you look back in your own life, you'll probably see and understand that there's many things that the enemy wanted to do to your life. There's many things that you even tried to do to your own life. But by, because of the hand of the Lord has chosen and set you apart for his glory, you're still here today and you're here for the glory of God. Man, I tell you what, that's shouting ground. I feel like giving him glory and praise. Amen. I'm not sitting down tonight. I'm standing up. I feel like preaching. Amen. And, uh, and I'm excited. He sanctified thee. See, it's important to know that you've been chosen. Hallelujah. You've been set apart. You are a meat for the master's use. And you got to understand, hallelujah, that the call upon your life is, is, is important, is genuine, and you need to walk it out for the glory of God. And he also says, I ordained you. In other words, now I have set you in position. I have, I have put uh, your, your life in order. I have ordained you. I, I have basically what God was trying to get Jeremiah to understand that I have positioned your life by the destiny and the purpose of God. And now I've given you assignment. He said, I have ordained thee a prophet. In other words, now his comes his assignment, a prophet until the nations. Hallelujah. You may not be uh, called to the world. You may not be called to across the ocean, but you're called. Hallelujah. You may be called across the street. You may be called in your neighborhood. But I want you to know that, that God has a design and an assignment for you. And you must begin to seek out what God's call is in your life. 
I believe, it, I believe today has been a, a leader in ministry for 40 years. One of the things that are missing in the believer's life today is understanding, hallelujah, to, to know how important you are in the very plan of salvation for others. See, the Bible says, how will they know except there be a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Hallelujah. Other words, God says there's got to be a voice somewhere. I need a voice. See, many of us want to disqualify ourselves where God's already qualified you. When the blood of Jesus was applied to your life, he's already saved you and delivered you and set you free and washed you by his blood and cleansed you and set you apart and sanctified you and filled you with the Holy Ghost. And now he's waiting and ready to send you forth with the call of God in, his, in your life. And he said, I've called you as a prophet to the nation. Amen. And I want you to really grasp this in your spirit. God is not a respected person. He created Jeremiah for a special time, season, and for a special people. It is the same with you and I. So what God did with Jeremiah, God has no respect to person. I believe that he's doing in this season. In 2022, here we are entering into August 2022. There's a lot of things going on. Rumors of wars, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff. The pandemic still rising up again. People are beginning to, to feel the pressures of financial pressures and all these things. I want you to understand, amen, if the Lord be for you, if God's for you, who can be against you? Listen, our welfare and our well-being is not based upon the economy of the United States or the earth. God is our resource. Hallelujah. If he could feed the prophet uh, by the brook Cheridan with ravens and he fed him three times a day, don't you know that the Lord would take care of his own? Hallelujah. So do not let fear and things enter into your heart. Praise the Lord. The Lord will sustain you. That's his promise to you and I. And we got to hold on to it. So you were created for a specific and a very special purpose. To solve a specific problem on the earth. And we call this an assignment. Because you've been called for something direct and specific. Then you got to understand your assignment. Amen. It's very broad. You were wonderfully made and created. Marvelous at thy works. This is what Psalms 139, 14 and through 16. And that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which, in, which is in the continents of fashion, when as yet there was none of them. This is a very powerful scripture. Now I want to talk about just a couple things, eight things, and I may not get finished with all eight of them tonight, but I want to get started with them. Eight important facts about your assignment. Now, if you're taking notes, you need to write these down. This is important because this is an arena I believe is very, very important. Now I'm teaching from an uh, old book from Mike Murdoch, uh, The Most Important Things in Your Life. I mentioned that before, but uh, uh, you probably can't, don't even know if you can even buy it anymore. It's an old book. I've read it many, many times in my life, and it's been an inspiration for me. So it's eight facts about your assignment. Number one, if you're taking notes, God is totally focused on you, your ways, and your assignment. Psalms 39 and 3, I can pass my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. So number one is telling you and I that God is concerned about and focused on your ways. Uh, everything about your life, God is concerned about and about your assignment. If you miss your assignment, you will miss your God-given purpose in life. Amen. I remember when I was struggling as a young Christian saying, God, what, is you, what have you called me to? What have you called me for? Uh, what, what, what should I be doing? And I didn't know for, for quite some time I continued to serve the Lord in my early walk with the Lord as a Christian, stumbling around, making mistakes. But my heart was that I wanted to know. I wanted to serve the Lord because I was a very strong advocate for serving sin. 
Hallelujah. I, I live for sin. I live for the devil. I kicked up my heels. I did it all. Amen. But when I met the love of the grace of Jesus Christ, it changed my life. I fell in love with who he was and how he changed my life. Amen. And what a blessing that he is. And so God wants you to know that, he, that he's concerned about your assignment. Number two, God carefully examines every word you speak daily. Woo. Now, this is important. You make sure you catch this. God is carefully examining every word that you speak daily. This is what Psalm 39, 4 says. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Now, we got to understand something. You can't be speaking doubt and fear and think that you can speak to the mountains and the mountain arise up. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says that, that he said, if you could say to this mountain, rise up and be cast in the sea, it would do. It, it, it will obey your voice. In other words, because life and death is in your words, in your tongue, the Bible says. So I want to encourage you to be careful to getting caught up with negative Amen. And corrupt communications. See, there's a lot of believers today. They don't believe there's nothing wrong with cursing and having ungodly language. Gossiping. Talking about people. Amen. Slandering people. Doing these ungodly things. And they think they're going to hear the Lord say, well done. Well, if you don't get that thing right, I'm afraid you might be in trouble. Because the Bible deals with that precisely about calling it evil and ungodly. So it's important for you to understand that God exists. Examines your words. So you need to begin to speak for the word of God. Let me just encourage you with something. You know, faith call things that is not as though they are. As I stand before you tonight, you must learn how to proclaim the truth of God's word when everything around you that you see does not support what you know in your spirit. Because in your spirit is where creative power begins to be released through faith. Hallelujah. Amen. And as you begin to continue to speak it, the Bible declares that whatever you say, you shall have. Amen. If you can declare it and speak it in faith. Hallelujah. And so it's important for you and I to know that the Lord is examining our words. Because if you're speaking negative about your assignment, if, you, if you're talking, you're trying to talk. Your, see, one of the problems with the natural mind is in humanity and in our carnality, our flesh, is that our mind wants to reason things. We want to figure everything out. Uh, I stand before you tonight in, in this assignment that God's called us to in this season. To, to, to carry the gospel around the world. I had no idea. I just had a word. I didn't know what to do. For just a, few, a year or so ago. A couple of years ago. I refused to even be on Facebook. Amen. I refused to be online. And I, and I remember a while back. I, as I was praying. And spending time with the Lord. I said to, my, I said to the Lord. I said you must be a God that has, uh, that has humor. Because um, you called me to do this. And I, and I refuse to do it. See, be careful what you say you ain't going to do. Because oftentimes, amen, what you're speaking or, or resisting oftentimes can be tied to your assignment. Hallelujah. See, and I believe what my case, I believe one of the things that God was doing with me was testing my heart. I believe he was testing me to find out rather if I wanted to get online to, to buff up myself, to, to walk in pride. Amen. And when I refused not to have any part, was it? It, it was that, that, that it was not that I didn't feel that I was adequate in the sense of I felt that I could do that. Amen. But I just felt like, no, uh, I, I'm not going to do that. Amen. And uh, maybe I had some wrong misconceptions of that. But I think also in a way that it was God testing me. When, when, I, when he walks this thing out and, I, and he receives my assignment, uh, will he stay humble? Will he, will he walk in wisdom and understanding and know that, that, that what I am doing through him, amen, is for the world and not just for him? This is important for you and I to understand. So be careful because whatever you say that others may not know or not hear, the Lord knows every idle word and thought. Hallelujah. Amen. And what that comes to is motive. See, see, he knows your very motives where you may cover it up from people. People do a lot of things with wrong motives. 
and they expect to be rewarded. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll be rewarded, all right, because God knows the wrong motive that was driving it. Let me get off of that and move on. Number three, the Holy Spirit who created you is with you continuously. Now, this is important for you to understand as you, as you begin to seek and begin to call out to the Lord and say, look, God, what is my call? What, what's my assignment? What should I be doing? I want you to know the world's bigger than a local church assembly. It's, it's bigger than four walls. You're not called just to, to be in a church to show up on Sunday morning and that's, you know, and then I get my fix and I go home. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not anti-church. I want you to catch me. I mean, you should be part of a local church. But that should not be your only means of doing ministry and assignment for your life. Because there's a lot of people who's not going to go to church. There's a lot of circumstances you walk through life is not going to be in that church building. Amen. And if you're only connected to that for your source of strength and understanding, then what about all the other seven, six days of the week? Amen. What you going to do when, when the enemy attacks you and circumstances arise? Oh, I got to be in church. I got to be. No, no, you are the church. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to, and know that he is continuously with me all the time. Amen. And here's what it says again, 30, uh, Psalms 39 and 5. He keeps his hand upon your life. Ooh, praise the name of the Lord. He keeps his hand upon your life. Praise the Lord. For J Jesus said this, any man be in the Father's hand, there's no man able to pluck him out. So one of the first things I think about this scripture in Psalms is telling me is I have security. I have protection. Hallelujah. And what come, what may or whatever happens, the Lord has given me security. We are protected by the power and the strength of a sovereign God that loves us. Praise the Lord. Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thy hand upon me. Hallelujah. Do you know that the Lord has laid his hand on you? That's what Psalms 139 and 5 is saying. Man, isn't that powerful? Isn't that a blessing? Amen. Hallelujah. To be know that the Lord has put his call in his hand and his blessing upon our life. Amen. And then know that he is who created you is with you continuously. Number four, you will never be outside of his reach or access. Hallelujah. I'm going to let me make sure you catch that again. You will never be outside of his reach or access. Praise the Lord. Here's again, Psalms 139, 7 through 10. It says, whether shall I go from thy spirit or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I send up into the heavens, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me. Oh, praise the Lord. David is encouraging us out of the presence of the Lord. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you even to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. What a blessing that is. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and you got to know that when you're when you begin to walk out your assignment and your calling and what God's assigned for your life. I want you to know that you can be assured the Lord is with you. Amen. And he will not forsake you. Number five. Hallelujah. This is important for you to catch. When you are in the darkest trials of your life, he will turn on the light for you to in, to be able to. For you to complete this assignment that he planned within you. In other words, when, when, when things come against what God has told you. Uh, what, the, what the writer here is talking about, God will turn the light on. In other words, God will begin to enlighten your heart through the Holy Spirit. Amen. To how with wisdom and strength and direction and steps to take to complete your assignment that's been planted within you. Psalms 139, well, we hung on 139, aren't we? Verse 11 through 13. It says, If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be a light upon me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth its day, and the darkness and the lights are both alike thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. So be encouraged that whatever God has planned for your life, God will see to it that you finish it. For whatever God starts, 
He that has begun a good work in you shall perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I always like to put that in stone. These little short term is God never starts something. He don't finish. Hallelujah. And you listen. There's a lot of progress and there's a lot of, um, of positioning and change and, and things that you go through from starting to finishing. Amen. Because it's all pro, uh, process in your life. And, and process is very, very important with your growth and maturity and walk with the Lord. Because see, what you think you know and how, what, how, the picture you know of God now. How many of you know you just scratched the surface of how great he is and how powerful he is and how awesome he is? I've been a Christian for 45 years now, going a few days further or behind somewhere in that neighborhood. And I want you to understand something. I, I, the more I think I know of, uh, of the ways and the nature and the heart of God and the greatness of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, he begins to reveal something more to me in a fresh new way. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about every day experiencing the newness of a relationship with my Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. The one that saved me from death, hell, and the grave. He's given us life. And he loved us. And he calls us to fulfill our assignment. I, I can say to you personally, when you're walking in the will of God for what God's called you for this season in this time, there's no greater joy and fulfillment in your life. That when you know that you're every day doing what you've been called and created in your mother's womb to do for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's a powerful blessings with that. So I want you to really grasp that. Number six, it is impossible to count the pleasurable thoughts that pour out from the mind of God towards you every day. God continues to show forth his blessings and his glory in your life again. This is Psalms 39, 139, 17, and 18. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Man, what a powerful, powerful truth. Now, number seven, I wanted to get to these, these last two quickly, and then I'll be through for tonight. Number seven is, it is your own responsibility. Now, make sure you catch this. It is your own responsibility to identify your assignment. I always like to say it like this. God created our destiny, but it is our responsibility to discover. In other words, to, to, to go after, to uncover, uh, and grow to the place uh, that we can walk out our assignment. It's important. It's very important for your life. Do not expect others to define your assignment for you. Woo, hallelujah. See, we like to get in a prayer line and get in a prophetic line and let somebody speak over our life and tell us, go this way, go that way. This is what I need you to do. That's what you're supposed to be doing. And oftentimes, amen, we'll follow after the instructions of man and forfeit the plan of God for our life. Woo, praise the name of the Lord. Now, men, oh, men and women of God and the unction of the Holy Spirit certainly can help us at different times and should speak encouragement to our faith. But you should not rest your assignment or your direction of life upon the instructions of man. You should rely only upon the word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, because he'll never lead you wrong. Praise the Lord. It is, it is not thy responsibility to do so. In other words, it is not their responsibility to do so. They have a personal responsibility to discover your own assignment. We each have a personal responsibility to discover the call of God in your life. You must discover your own assignment for yourself. God intended it, intended it to be so. This will require your personally reaching. Now watch this. I'm going to give you a few adjectives. You got to reach for it. Hallelujah. It's not going to fall out of the sky and hit you in the head. If God wants me to do it, God will make me do it. God ain't going to make you do anything. He didn't make you get saved. He's not going to make you serve him. Amen. He's not going to make you go to heaven. Matter of fact, he's not even going to make you go to hell. You and I choose if we will reach out and believe and receive what God's word has promised us. Amen. By faith 
and by the grace of Jesus Christ. We got to reach for it. Somebody ought to prophesy yourself. It's time to start reaching. Amen. You got to scratch yourself. Remember Jesus told the man that had the withering hand. Amen. He didn't pray for him. He didn't say be healed. He said, scratch forth your hand. In other words, he had to believe for the supernatural to what he had not ever done to begin to have the energy and the faith to put in motion. Amen. To receive his healing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, there's a lot of people waiting on God to do it all. And God says, I'm waiting on you. Praise the Lord. When will you step up to the plate? Amen. And put faith with your words. When will you step up to the plate and say, I'm hungry for the things of God. See, God's raising a generation. God's raising up a people right now. Hallelujah. It's not settling for, for just the, the, the floor mats of religion and dead idols and philosophies of men. Amen. We're hungry for the presence and the glory of Christ in the earth. We're calling as being sons of God to see the manifestation of the glory of God. As the Bible says, the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. We know who we are. And we're not going to settle for anything any less. We're reaching for the greater greats and the higher heights from glory to glory, from faith to faith. And then you got to have a heart in you to pursue after it. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to pursue for the things. For the Bible says, the kingdom of God has suffered violent, but the violent take it by force. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Amen. When you get hungry enough to say, I want what God has for my life, you'll begin to start doing whatever you need to do to pursue the things of God. Your, 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 your perspective begins to shift and change. What used to be more important in your life, you begin to start setting those things aside and begin to replacing them for the godly things of, of seeking out the things of God. Prayer becomes essential for your life, not an option. Amen. Hallelujah. When, see, when you have a heart to pursue the things of God, prayer is not something that you do. Prayer is something that becomes a part of who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. When you begin to be a believer that pursues the things of God. Amen. You can't get tied up with nonsense and, and wasting time with things that are empty and never brings real true life. Amen. I, 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 I'm encouraging you tonight. You got to pursue the things of God and moving toward his presence. This is what Romans 14 and 12 says. Amen. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Hallelujah. See, we're going to have to give an account. We're responsible. See, we, we, we have been rocked to sleep with the formalities and traditions of men to put our walk with God on the shoulders of an assembly, a leader, or somebody else. When the truth of the matter is, you are where you are spiritually. Because of your own decisions and it's your responsibility to bring about change. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm almost through. but I just want to make sure I got that in. The, in number eight, the word of God is a blueprint for your assignment. And you must be, this must become your daily focus. Hearing from him will make your assignment clear, irrevocable, and immovable. This has dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to thy word, Psalms 119 and 65. Ye are on the earth, you and I are on the earth to solve a problem. That is why it is called an assignment. Amen. We're going to stop here tonight. Listen, I want to pray for you tonight. I want to stir your heart and hope I've stirred your heart. Amen. To encourage you to begin to push your way, begin to pursue the things of God for your life, for your assignment. Listen to me tonight. Hallelujah. Quit wasting time. Amen. Uh, being satisfied with lukewarmness and emptiness where he has spoken in his word that the spirit shall be in you like a river springing up into everlasting life. Amen. Hallelujah. Powerful gushing of life force of God in you. Amen. Seek after. He said, if you seek, ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. Ask and ye shall receive. Hallelujah. I pray for you tonight. Father, bless your people. Thank you for our time together tonight. 
Amen. Thank you for the assignment of God upon our lives. Lord, help us that we may pursue and perceive and walk out what you've called us to be and to do in this season and this time. I pray for those believers that are wandering around endlessly in hopelessness and feeling like they're not worth, they have no worth, they have no assignment. I pray that this word will spark a, 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 a belief in them that God has created me to, to be a problem solver. Hallelujah for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining with us. Listen, share and like. God bless you. We love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Walk out your assignment for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.